In a previous video, we talked about simplifying radicals that were square roots. Well, now we are going to talk about simplifying radicals that are cubed roots. You may be wondering what a cube root looks like. The cube root, it's like if I have the cube root of a number, the cube root of 8. Now remember, we talked about using rational exponents, and there's just like a 1 up here if there's nothing there, actually. So that's the same thing as 8 to the 1 third. Now I do have to write this cube root because if nothing is there, I assume, and I know, maybe I shouldn't assume anything, but if nothing is there, it's a square root. So let's get familiar with not perfect squares, but perfect cubes. Here are some perfect cubes. 2 to the third, or 2 cubed is 8. That is 2 times 2 times 2. 3 to the third. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 4 to the third. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. 5 to the third is 125. And 6 to the third is 216. And I could go on and on and on to infinity, but I will not. I need to get familiar with these numbers, 8, 27, 64, 125, that are perfect cubes. Now let's talk about the perfect cubes when we're dealing with variables. With variables, if I have x times x times x, remember when you multiply the same base, you add those exponents. Each of these exponents, we know there is just a 1 up here, and 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. x squared times x squared times x squared. That would be 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is x to the 6. x to the 3rd times x to the 3rd times x to the 3rd. When you multiply the same base, you add those exponents. I have 3 of each of these because I'm talking about cubics. What do you notice about the exponents now for perfect cubes? They are all multiples of 3. So these numbers are all perfect cubes. These variables are all perfect cubes. And that's what we need when we are working with cubed roots. Now, I know I keep bringing this up, but I do want you to get used to the notation. The cube root of 27 to the first is the same thing as 27 to the one-third. This is written with a radical. This is written with a rational exponent. The cube root of 8 to the fourth is equal to 8 to the four-thirds. So with that in mind, Let's look at this problem. The cube root of x to the 12th. Cubic, cubic, cubic. I'm thinking cubic, not squares. Well, 12 is a multiple of 3. So maybe I just know that x to the 4th times x to the 4th times x to the 4th is x to the 12th. Three of those. But maybe, maybe I like knowing about the notation that that is equal to x to the 12 thirds, which is equal to x to the fourth. x to the 12th is a multiple of 3, so it is a perfect cube root. It comes out from underneath the radical, and when it comes out, it is x to the fourth. Cube root of y to the eighth. y to the eighth. 8 is not a multiple of 3, so I'm going to break it down just like I did when I was working with square roots. I'm going to break that down to what? y to the 7th? No, that won't help. y to the 6th? Oh, yes. So y to the 6th. Now, I can't just change this to y to the 6th because it's my birthday. Actually, it's not my birthday. I stopped having those at 39. But I'm going to change this to y to the 6th times y to the 2nd. That is y to the 8th. And then I know that y to the 6th 
that is a perfect cube. It gets out from underneath the radical. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Now what happens to this? It just has to hang out. But now don't forget to put that cube root of that y squared. Okay, let's try another one. The cube root of 125 x to the 15th. Let's think about the number. Now the cube root of 125, it's good to get familiar with your cube roots, with the smaller ones. And I know 5 cubed is 125. 125 is perfect. So it comes out, the cube root of 125 is just 5. And now I have a variable. And I notice this exponent, it is a multiple of 3. Yes, it is perfect also. 15 divided by 3 is x to the 5th. The variable also came out from underneath the radical. And now, I have the cube root of 128, x to the 7th, y to the 12th, z to the 11th. Whew! Okay, this looks fun, right? 128, 128, 128. Once again, maybe I would like the factor tree. If you take 128, divide it by 2, divide it by 3. If I divide it by 2, I will get 64. And 64 is one of my perfect cubes. So, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to break 128 down to 64 times 2. That's the same thing as 128. Now, x to the 7th, I want that to be a multiple of 3. 7 is not a multiple of 3. Go down. 6 is. So I will change that to x to the 6th times x to the 1st. y to the 12th. No, it's a multiple of 3. We will leave it just like it is. And z to the 11th. Well, 11 is not a multiple of 3. Go down. 10 is not a multiple of 3. Go down. 9, 9 is. Be z, and I like to put a little line through my z, so it will not look like a 2. So that be z to the 9th times z to the 2nd. Well, let's get those perfect cubes out from underneath that radical, and we will leave the rest in there. The cube root of 64 is 4, because I know 4 to the 3rd is 64. Oops, can't do anything with that too. Sorry. X to the 6, oh, that is a perfect cube. 6 divided by 3 is 2. I've used that. X, oops, sorry, can't do anything with him. Y to the 12th, oh, yes, that is perfect. It'd be Y to the 4th when it comes out from underneath that radical. Z to the 9th is a perfect cube. When it comes out from underneath the radical, it'll be z to the third, because 9 divided by 3. And then I can't do anything with z to the second. So all of these that were perfect cubes, they came out from underneath the radical because they were perfect. But then don't forget, you have the cube root of, what did we have here? We had 2 and a an x and a z squared. And there is that exciting problem. What I'm showing you now is something that you can make on a little index card, but if these were your x's, and if I square this number, cube this number, take this number to the fourth, so 2 to the second is 4, 2 to the third is 8, 2 to the fourth is 16, 2 to the 5th is 32. And you do this with 3. 3 to the 2nd is 9. 3 to the 3rd is 27. 3 to the 4th is 81. 3 to the 5th is 243. And I could fill all these numbers in. And it's best if you make this card yourself. But everything in this column are perfect squares. Everything in this column. Perfect cubes. Perfect to the 4th. So that just may help you when you are working with radicals. Okay, good luck.